actually kind of led into there uh, when you you kind of alluded to the uh, you know the buildup and the uh, the hydrogen ions and so forth. Uh, when I had discussed the uh, the situation with you some time back, uh, you were talking about how it, you, it kind of causes you to cringe a bit with uh, people talking about lactic acid buildup. And, <laughs> you know, basically that no, it's really not. You know, lactic acid is not the uh, uh, the villain. You know, no, that, uh, we you know that, that's purported to be. And yeah. so that perhaps uh, it's something that you, uh, you know, could speak to. Uh, sure. Yeah, speak yeah. To. Well, and, you know, anytime there, there are developments and breakthroughs in research, it takes at least 20 years for it to get to the lay public, right? Uh, for the information to get disseminated and people to pick up on it. And, of course, coaches, especially football coaches, they never pick up on new stuff, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, they're going to keep doing the same stuff they were doing back in the 40s. Um, Give them salt tablets. Let's give them salt tablets and no water. And no water, exactly. <laughs> oh, God. It's amazing we don't kill more people than we do already. Um, but, yeah, the whole lactic acid thing, um, number one, post-exercise, uh, well, first of all, it, I, and again, I don't, I don't mean to be all pedantic and start splitting hairs here, but I just talk it in language. I talk in class, right? What we're really talking about is lactate. Okay. Lactate is the salt of lactic acid and, um, and lactate's what accumulates in the blood. Um, but lactate is not a, we used to call it a waste product. It's not a waste product at all. It's a very critical component of metabolism. Yep. And what the, the fatigue culprit is, is when the hydrogen ions dissociate from lactic acid and the, you get lactate and hydrogen ion, the hydrogen ions are what's causing the fatigue, okay? The hydrogen ions are what's causing the fatigue um, and causing the burning and causing the, 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 the um, um, uh, affecting your ability to, contr to, to contract the muscle because hydrogen ions are competing with calcium for binding sites to contract the muscle. And they also, because they are, uh, they are hydrogen ions, H plus, they are um, dropping the pH. So your muscles are becoming more acidic. Now we have natural metabolic buffering systems to buffer lactic acid or lactate or hydrogen, well, well, to, again, hydrogen ions, but your buffering system can only do so much. And then you start to accumulate uh, that in the blood and it starts to affect your performance. Basically, you start to accumulate this fairly quickly, but it stays below a threshold so it doesn't affect your performance. Once you go above a threshold and we look at lactate, but those lactate and hydrogen ions kind of go up at a, at a similar rate, of course. Uh, once you get above four millimoles uh, in the blood, that's when you start to have, well, what we call onset of blood lactate accumulation. Um, and that's when your hydrogen ions are increasing and that's when they're affecting your performance, uh, affect again, affecting your, how you feel the burning sensation in your muscles, ability to, to, to repeatedly contract the muscle ability to contract the muscle completely, um, all of that. And so, and lactate, I mean, lactate actually, it, I mean, again, it's a byproduct of, it's a byproduct of metabolism, but we can we can, you know, lactate can go to the liver. We can convert lactate to glucose and we can also use lactate as a substrate itself without even converting it to glucose. So, I mean, lactate's incredibly important. Um, it's not, again, it's not the waste product that everybody was teaching 20, 30 years ago. You, that, that, that's, you can look up old textbooks and they call it a waste product, uh, but it's very important. But but it's the, 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 the bugger there, though, is the hydrogen ions that come out of the lactic acid that cause the burning, cause the increase in acidity or decrease in pH, however you want to think of it, same thing, um, and cause the fatigue. So how, how do we prevent that onset or mitigate it when it's there? Well, so now you're talking about lactate threshold. Um, and oh, Sam, is it time to go outside? Okay. Um, Anytime I get on a call, my dog has to go outside. So I'm going to the patio. Um, so with lactate threshold, what you're going to do there is, you know, it's a whole, to me, it's a whole lot easier to talk about lactate threshold with more, um, 
with runners and whether it's whether it's endurance runners or whether it's intermediate runners and looking at lactate threshold, I, I'm I'm trying to envision kind of what lactate threshold training for this sport would look like because because what you're wanting to do with with your lactate threshold is you're wanting to if i could show you a graph and i really can't uh, what you're wanting to do is you're wanting to delay the delay the the time and the and the intensity essentially where your lactate starts to increase i mean like over that four millimole level okay um but i know how to do that in training again 400 meter 800 meter 5k marathon whatever in your sport that that's interesting I, I think i think the best way to to do lactate threshold training in your sport is going to be doing a lot of upper body muscular endurance work which sounds positively miserable to me if you want to know the truth because and you guys you may not know this physiologically paul probably does but for any given workload, I, I don't care, any given workload, upper body ergometry is a much, much, much greater threat to homeostasis and much harder on the body than lower body ergometry. So what does that mean? Well, let's think about a cycle. We can put like three kilograms of resistance on a, on a, on a, on a bike, right? And you can go and you can ride the bike and you're doing fine. I mean, easy, right? Well, let's get an arm ergometer and let's put three kilograms of resistance on an arm ergometer. And you tell me how you feel after about five minutes. It's horrible. Actually, tell me how you feel after about three minutes. It's horrible. Uh, it's horrible. It's horrible. Upper body ergometry because of the smaller musculature and the, 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 the less capillarization, less mitochondria. Um, it, it's just, I mean, it's just a, a much, a much greater threat to homeostasis. When you do arm, arm ergometry, Compared to, to, to leg ergometry, you get a greater drop in pH, you get a greater increase in core temperature, you get a greater increase in heart rate, greater increase in blood pressure, um, gosh, well, uh, uh, greater increase in, in catecholamine in the blood, uh, so, you know, for epinephrine, norepinephrine. I mean, it, it, it's, it's all different. So what I'm thinking with you guys – whatever kind of repetitive muscular endurance training that you can do working your upper body musculature, that's what's going to help your lactate threshold. So one general question and then one arm wrestling specific one, how much of that differentiation between lower body and upper body has to do with proximity to the heart <laughs> or lack of repetitive use of your upper body? That's a great question. Uh, the 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 research on arm ergometry and how it's so different than lower body ergometry, the proximity to the heart. Um, you know, I, I I talked about capillarization and mitochondria and all that, and the, and the and the size of the muscle. Uh, proximity to the heart apparently has a role there as well. Now I can't. I mean, it's been it's been 15 years since I did any did any upper body research, but but I know that that proximity to the heart does have a does have a role. OK, right. uh, I just don't remember exactly how prominent the role is, um, but I would think it's fairly prominent, honestly. Um, now, what was the other part of that, Paul? Um, like or the comparison to like the proximity of the heart or is it more associated to the fact that our upper body is largely less active and less load? bearing? Oh, uh, well, I, I would say that. Um, well, physiologically, and I'm going back to some of the research that I had to cite in some papers years ago, physiologically, I think it's less to do with that because because even people that do a lot of arm work, you can still you can still take them to the lab and have them do arm versus leg at similar load because it's all about similar load, right? Yeah. And if you do it at similar load, they're still going to have the same struggle. Yeah. Um, we know, let, let me go cardiovascular for a moment we know with a vo2 max test and this is assuming a good valid test right that somebody does a test on the treadmill and we get a good vo2 max from them well then we do a vo2 peak test on, a, on an arm ergometer 
their value is going to be about 65 to 70 percent of what it was on the treadmill. Yep. I mean, it, you, the arms just aren't made for that kind of stuff. And exactly. so and so your question, I, I don't I don't think it's the latter. I think it's more the former proximity to the heart, capillarization, okay. mitochondrial density uh, and, and size of the muscle. OK, so at the end of the day, <laughs> our legs are meant for repetitive movement. Our arms are not as much so. <laughs> um, but my, my follow on question to that would be, I know you said about like, like if you're an arm wrestler and how are you going to train for this stamina? So let, let's, let's take all of the gym stuff out and let's okay. imagine all of our training that we do is on the table. For me, when I'm, when I'm approaching like endurance, I'm using a lot of static holds with a, with a, with, with a person, maybe an added band for resistance for mm -hmm. time. Let's okay. say one minute, two minutes, static holds. We're not going to, we'll be at a hundred percent for a while until we gas out and we'll reduce the load for rounds of, let's say a minute or two minutes. Mm -hmm. Is there more value in rather than statically holding a position, surging and twitching for a shorter duration? Man, you're asking some great questions. Um, what we'll, What we're talking about there is we're talking about concentric training versus isometric training mm -hmm. now we know isometric training this is a trick question i ask my classes every semester so is isometric training good for building strength and they're all like well no and i'm like well no actually it's really good for building strength at that one point in the range of motion it's not very functional yep right because you're only training at that one point in the range of motion however I would imagine not having watched any arm wrestling, except maybe in that one Sylvester Stallone movie many years ago, uh, <laughs> uh, which, yeah, I, I don't think I watched that whole movie either. Um, but I know there's probably a lot of isometric contraction in a competition, right? Where you're, you're working against each other and you're probably in an isometric contraction, right? Well, yeah, there's there's plenty of times where you feel like you're pushing against the wall. Right. That's what I'm thinking. But at the same time, um, and that's fine, but you're still in a continuum uh, on the muscle contraction curve. And so um, I'm going to say that you're going – I'm not saying that some isometric, you know, hold training like you were talking about. I think that's probably beneficial, but I think you're probably as far as if you're talking about – about you know time investment to benefit cost benefit mm -hmm. you're probably going to get more bang for the buck doing uh more more uh repetitive contraction twitch training right now what about the combination of the two well what yeah i mean i think i, I think combination twitch for their, for you know repetitions but through like what what is is there any value to the combination of isometrics yeah. and yeah explosively yeah i think yeah i think so i think it's just a matter of how much how much time of your train because you don't i mean how you right. only got a finite amount of time to train every day right yeah uh, and so i think it's going to be a matter of how you know how much time are you going to invest and what percentage do you want to give to the isometric training and i think I, I think there's value there i do think there's value there but i think probably the to me, you're going to get better, better bang for the buck, if you will, by doing more repetitive contraction, fast twitch training. Now, it's the kind of thing where, I mean, how many days a week do you train, Paul? <laughs> five, six, five, okay. five in the gym and the sixth on the table. Okay. Well, then your five days in the gym, you know, maybe you have, I don't know, maybe you have, I don't know four days where you or three days where you're doing contraction twitch training and two where you're doing isometric training or, okay. or four where you're doing, you know, contraction training. And then one day a week, you're just doing straight up, you know, iso, you know isometric stuff, you know, that, so that's what I'm saying. I think, I think you're going to get better results focusing on the other, but I do think there's value in the isometric training for sure. Okay. I love it. This is gold. This I'm going to write, I'm going to write all this down. <laughs> Ryan, we're not going to release this to any other. No, way. that's what I'm saying. I don't know. It, I don't know if it's gold. Secret. 
<laughs> Hell, it may, may be lead. I don't know if it's gold or not. <laughs> no, there, there, there is not a lot of like scientific input into this sport. It's a lot of trial and error. Yeah, that's what when we were talking last week, the three of us on the on the other call, um, I, and I said I was going to look and I forgot. Um, I, I need to go into the literature and look up and see how much how much physiological sports specific research has been done in arm wrestling. Because I mean, I've never looked it up, never been a thing of mine, but I've also never stumbled across any article that I can recall. You, you wouldn't, you wouldn't. I, the only reason I would, the only way I think that there would be an article would be a, a, an association to an injury that's specific to arm wrestling. Right. It may have triggered some research. Yeah. 